welcome you and thank you for joining me here today for a little bit of technical drawing. <laughs> um, I'm a goldsmith by trade and I work for the, the I work on, as a technician on the jewelry course on the Design uh, and Craft Council of Ireland's jewelry course and it's just above the National Craft Gallery in Kilkenny City, that's where it is. I did my apprenticeship as a goldsmith in Copenhagen and as a part of that apprenticeship we learned technical drawing. And technical drawing uh, can be a little bit hard to not get lost in, but um, it is such a help when you move into the making process of certain types of rings and certain types of jewelry, where you have to try and think through the construction beforehand. Otherwise, you might just find there's a little bit of material missing somewhere where you really could have used it. Uh, doing technical drawings, being a goldsmith, you, you work with quite expensive materials and making a technical drawing can help calculating the materials you actually need. And then uh, it also provides measurements along uh, when the, the drawings are done, it provides measurements that you can use when you're making your piece of jewelry. Um, the technical drawings I will do with you today are of a hollow form uh, ring. And maybe Caroline, could you put the photo of the, the hollow form ring up perhaps? I think I emailed it to you. Um, and it is, it is a piece of jewelry or a ring that is difficult to make at the best of times, but almost impossible to make without a proper template. So what I'm going to be using the technical drawing, yeah, there it goes, there you see it. So what I'm going to be using the technical drawing for today is to make a template for cutting out and constructing the ring. Um, the, today with the ring, I'm going to be doing a front view, a side view, a top view, and an end view in two by two to one, in scale two to one. And that means that the drawing is two times bigger than in real life. And I'll also do another drawing, which is one-to-one. -one. And the reason why I split them up like that is because one-to-one -one is very small and it might be hard for you to see. So I'll switch over and do the one-to-one -one, uh, size or scale to allow me to do the template. Okay. Now, um, you don't need too much fancy stuff to do a technical drawing. I have a Faber-Castell board for technical drawing, which is a huge help. But uh, the first drawings I did, I did on a, on a board with a, with a basic uh, T-square, a Z-square, a compass, and a rubber and pencil. So it does, you just need one straight edge. So it doesn't, it doesn't um, need to be expensive if you need to do it. I also find that as a goldsmith, I also always have emery paper lying around. And that is so handy for sharpening the lead on your, your compass because it's small drawings, isn't it? So uh, I have uh, prepared some of the drawings simply because otherwise it's a little bit of a slow and tedious process and in, in some ways a little bit less creative than the three forms glowing. Um, but just because it takes so long and you have to get the measurements right, I have prepped some of the drawings. I'll explain how I got to the stage but I have prepped some of them to ensure we get somewhere in the 40 minutes and we get to the template as well. Okay, now I wanted to, before I start drawing, let me just swap cameras, if you can just bear with me one moment. Um, there you go. I wanted to just show you another thing that I used uh, technical drawings for. This is a pill box. So it's a small box with a hidden hinge. And a hidden hinge means that when you look at look at it from yeah, from the top, uh, you won't be able to see the hinge. So, but in order to do a hinge like that, it has to be situated really, really accurately for the pin not to either fall out or for it to be buried so deep that the lid doesn't open properly. So, in order to calculate that the lid open at the right angle and that that the hinge is still hidden and that you still have the five. Uh, you just want the three uh, tubes on one side and two on the other side to ensure that you still have that a technical drawing was carried out. So this is another thing that you can use the technical drawings where it's difficult to ascertain on a on a on a 
on a curved surface. Okay, now, now this is uh, this is the ring that you that you that I'll be working with today, and this is the two to one scale. Um, this is the first view. You can see that it's double the size, and this is the second view, like that. Underneath, I'm going to be doing a top view, which will be like this, if you can see. And then at the, at the other side, I'm going to be doing an end view. We will we'll be looking at it like that. Okay? So I'll be, I'll be using the actual ring to kind of maybe illuminate, because sometimes it's really hard to, to, to get where the measurements are actually coming from. But when you see the ring in, 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 in real life, so to speak, sometimes it helps illuminate that particular thing. Okay? Now, I have started by drawing a circle. That circle um, is the outside of the ring, and it lies here. The inside of the ring is the ring size. In this case, this is a ring where the design relies heavily on the ring size. The design kind of starts with the ring size, because as you can see, these straight walls come down and meet exactly. So you start with the ring size, which is the size 51, and the way I get the radius out of a size 51 is that you, 51, if you have a size 51, that is the perimeter of the, or the circumference of the circle. So if you, if you divide that by six, you'll have the radius, and the radius will give you this. In this case, you have to multiply by two again because we dot the size. So this is the inside. Inside this ring lies a tube. If you can imagine that you're fitting a tube in through the ring and the tube lies, fits snugly inside the ring and you solder it on, that allows me to seal this space off and make it nice and neat on the inside. So this tube, you can see it here. It lies here. That's one mil tick. And then the sheet that the rest of the ring is constructed from is also one mil tick. Then I, when you file, when you put a, a ring like this together where, where the two parts meet, you will be seeing this edge, as you can see from my pencil, but you'll also be seeing this facet down here. So this curve here, this facet, is created using this circle, but moving it down to touch the inner circle, which is the inside of the ring, which lie just here. Then I have con constructed a ring purely, this is purely design, how high I wanted it to be and how big the curve was going to be on top. So this is the design aspect of that ring and there's a lot of design in the front view and the side view. So this is the side view. So let me just see if I can find somebody something to keep it relatively sturdy. I hope you can see the ring. So this is the side view. Um, again, the design aspects begin to come in here. Obviously, the top here is going to be the same, but it's not going to be as long as over here because of the cutout. And the cutout starts exactly at this point, which is here, where the two, where the top of the ring and the inside of the ring meet. So this is now the cutoff point. And I have decided that the curve I like here is actually the same curve as the external one that lies here. So this is the exact same curve. And then it's straight the rest of the way down. I could have made it, you know, like straight down like that if I wanted to. I could have done everything. And this is only a design, the design of the ring. And this is the way I've decided to make it. I also decided to ensure to make the bottom part of the ring slightly curved. So I'm actually curving, which is actually the outside of the ring that lies down here. I hope that's, that's clear. At the, the, this ring is going to be constructed with a seam line that runs all the way up here on both sides. This will be made clear when I make the template. And it's also going to have a dome soldered onto it on the top. And then it's going to have the inside, which is like a tube that will be fitting through solid into the middle. So there's some big soldering and some big seam lines in this ring, which is another reason for 
trying to get it really precise and correct in the drawing and in the template. So when you go to um, make it, you have everything kind of right. Also, my experience as a goldsmith, of course, has a factor in this. And this drawing is for me and my production type. So I know, for instance, that when I go to construct a ring like this, there's going to be an awful lot of hammering and filing uh, in this ring. And the, the, the silver will expand in that process. So I will also know that when I go and do the template, that I might just keep that in my mind when I fold it all up, I might cut out a little bit and I might adjust the ring size. But that is, and I also know, for instance, this spot here, it's where you often end up having enough material. So when the template is done, you could just add a little bit. But that is kind of the things that when you've worked with it before, you can kind of anticipate. And the technical drawing helps you think the construction process through with the seam lines. What are you going to do first? What are you going to do next? And how am I going to hammer it up? And it also allows me to measure down along here, set lines across and measure down along here. So when I do my production, when I'm making the ring, I can measure and ensure that the ring that ends up in the end is the one that I had intended with the correct measurement. Now, I just wish to start doing the top view with you. Now, this is the top view. It'll be looking like this. Okay, so I'm just going to move the ring for a second and just start working on the top view. The top view, what you can, sorry, maybe we need the ring a little bit. So the top view, what you can see in the top view is you can see a curve, slightly funny shape from the top. And you can see this curve up here as well, but we don't need that. But this point that's here and these points here are what you can really see from the top view. So that means what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start drawing the circle. That is the outside of the ring that lies out here. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is, because this is the top view, um, what I need to construct, what you can see, is actually this point here. So, because this is, what you, what, this is the next round point that you can see from the top view. So from here to here, that is the circle that has to come next and lie in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure like that. And then I'm going to make my circle. When doing a technical drawing, uh, I would normally do the lines much, much lighter than I'm doing today. Uh, but I'm, I'm doing them a little bit heavier to ensure that you can see. Uh, but normally, when you're doing a technical drawing, all these supporting lines will be very, very faint, almost not seen. Okay, so that is that circle done. Then I need to figure out how this circle kind of changes from that circle to that circle. It's not strictly an oval. So I know that on this ring, out here is the edge of the shank or the outside of the shank, the outer diameter, this point here. So I know that this point is going to be the outer point of what you can see. So what I need is I need the width of the shank. The width of the shank I have here, I decided the width of the shank, I wanted it to be five millimeters in real life. So this is 10 millimeters across. So those dimensions I decided in my design process. So I'm now going to bring these dimensions over to this image. Now, maybe I should just say that it's important that these relate to each other. And what, what I mean by that is that so that when you swing over, that it actually relates to the image here. So that means the way, the most important is the starting point. And the starting point was made by um, this cross line here. And just giving myself a little bit of a space because I don't want to draw too much in. And then put my uh, compass here, swing it around based on the center line here. And that gives me this line and the center line there. That way, this image relates to this image and relates to this image. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to bring down the, um, the width of the shank. Now, obviously, you can measure. But 
since this is a technical drawing, we'll just use the lines as they're given to us. I'll bring that down. And then I need my compass. Go out to the line. And the next one. That. And where this in intercept the center line is where the shank is. The thickness of the shank. Okay, so now I have the shank featured in. I have the the outside the widest diameter and I have this diameter. So now I'm ready to try and construct the funny curve that's going to be happening there, which you can see when I hold the ring up, perhaps, that is kind of a slightly oval with the shank showing on the outside. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to make a, a small grid for myself that will allow me to measure on the ring out over there. So I have divided um, the half of the band, I suppose, up into, these are two mill lines. Um, I need a, a slightly larger. There we go. And the important thing is that they have to intercept the outer line of the ring. And the outer line lies here. This is the line that we are trying to construct. It lies out there. So it has to cross through that. Now, in order to do this on both sides, I would have to make the lines on the other side as well. But uh, once I have shown you this way, you know, it can easily be constructed going across the way as well. You end up with an awful lot of lines. And the lines can also be brought up to the end view and used in a similar fashion up there. So now um, I have to bring, at the point where these lines intersect there, I have to bring that over to the model over here because that will allow me to measure. So there's the first one. Here's the second one. Now you can see you can see the way that even though I started with a relatively perfect grid, you can see the way they begin to taper. And that is simply because of the difference. So up here, very little have happened down there. It's almost just the same. And it's only really at the end that things start to change, okay? So, sorry, I would need to just extend these to the middle point. So now, uh, as a goldsmith, I'm very fond of my caliper. And I use my caliper a lot. In this case, I will use my caliper, but you could also just use your dividers. Maybe we'll just use the dividers. Maybe that's easier. We can, so we'll just use the dividers. So at the, at the top here, this is the first line. It intersects the side at this stage. So that means when I go down here and do this, you can see that it just lies on the same line. Yeah. So the next one these are almost the same. Yeah. I jump down to this one. Sometimes it can be very difficult to keep track. So this line, so you can just follow the pencil. So it's this line, that one, that one, 
sorry, this line, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, all the way down. So it's this line we have. So we are beginning to move a little bit away. So we're beginning to have a shape that's beginning to look a little bit like this. Oh, we'll do the next one. Now things are beginning to happen. This is that one. That one there. Sorry now. There. And I'm going to do the last one because the measurements are so, it's all so small. So the last one is here. And the very, very last one, which sits just here, I know that that's where the shank meets. So we have something that looks like this. And what I forgot to do was to construct the curve of the shank. We'll just do that. Then Now, this means that we now have a shape that looks like this. When you continue down, the, all four sides will begin to take shape and they'll get that shape. So what you will be ending up with, if I'm just to quickly just kind of do, is something that looks a little bit like this. I'm going to do it by freehand. I'm going to hold up the ring. Yeah. So the thing with the grid, it's actually not that it's tricky, it's just tricky to keep track of all the lines. That is the trickiest part of the grid thing. But once you divide it up on the right side and have it all the same and then project, project across here, then you can measure over here and that will give you the points on the lines down there. So it does help. If I, in this case, of course, I have the ring, so that makes it a lot easier. Okay. So this is now the top view. We'll, we'll do the end view now. So I'm just going to move the camera a wee bit. Okay. Now, the end view is basically this. That is what we're trying to achieve at the, on the end view. It's seen from the bottom of the ring and up. So what we need in order to create the end view is we need the outer circle, which lies out here. And then we need the circle that you can see in here, which is the inside circle, the inside circle, that one there. Whereas down here, because it was the top view, we had to use the diameter here. This was the circle that we needed. For the end view, we need the inside diameter of the ring to create this pattern that lies here. This pattern inside. It'll make sense when, when we get when we get going. So I am now going to take the the inside diameter of the ring and draw it up here. The, the shape of the of the of of the end view is going to be very similar to the top view, but just a little bit different because one is the diameter of cross the ring, that's the the smaller circle, and the other one is the inside of the the ring itself, the shank itself, which is slightly smaller again. Okay. Again, I'm going to need the dimensions of the shank for starting up, 
And I'm going to need this curve as well, which I almost forgot the last time. So we're going to bring that up. And again, the end view is constructed in the same way as I explained with the, cup, with the top view to find the two center points. The center point through here, but also the center point here that's brought over. So it's very important to find this point first before you start drawing. So we will bring the thickness of the shank up. And bring it over. Now I see my fingers are beginning to get in the way. Just bear with me a moment. Yep. So that is the width of the shank. And then I am going to put in the curve of the shank as well, which is a millimeter deep. So I can take it from the inside tube here. And then I take the curve that I have down here that I've already defined and identified that that is what it is. And I bring it up. Get the point on my compass. And draw the thing over here. Get the point for the compass. And draw it. Now I can use the same grid as I did down here. So that means I can use the same measurements as I have over here, but they will vary a little bit where they meet up here because it's a different inner diameter that we have, okay? So I, I'm gonna move all, um, I'm gonna project all these up here. Which will allow me to construct the shape of the ring. Obviously, the reason why you'd want to make them really light is that so that the drawing underneath doesn't entirely disappear. Now, so the first one, the first one is, this one is going to be the outside of, of the band, so we have that here. And so the next one we have is this one. Let's come down here and over here. So we're going to measure that. So the next the next line, I hope you can see from my fingers. I'll try and see if I can move this. The next line is this one, which lies here. Right there. Oh, I think that slipped on the other side. Just bear with me a moment. There. And the next line up again is this one. And we keep going. And this is where it's beginning to get tricky to keep track of where you are. And now you can see we're beginning to hit the inner round. So experience tells me that we are more or less done with this one. And we have a shape that looks like this. This is the outer curve of the ring. So, oh, sorry, from the, it's hard to see underneath that. 
So what we need to construct now is the, the shank. So the shank lies in here. And it stops at the inner line of the ring, which is here. So that means that the cutout The cutout can be constructed in a similar way. We know that this point here is point zero. This is where the facet of the ring and the outer rim of the dome meet. So that is going to be out here. So you can construct it in the same way. And it's going to go down and meet the shank down here. So what we have is a shape that's going to run like this. So now you have something that looks like this. Now what I'm, so this is kind of like the inside of the ring. I hope this kind of makes sense to you. It's all very small, but you can kind of, I hope you can kind of see it there. Yeah. Now the reason why I'm going through the end view, the front view, the top view and the side view is to allow me to think through how I'm going to construct this show some pitfalls and what I need to be aware of when I start constru constructing. When I start constructing, what I really need is a template. So we're now going to move to the scale one to one drawing. Sorry, I'm just going to move the camera to get that into view, which is here. Now I have already drawn the front view in one in one to one scale and the side view in 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 the sorry now in one to one scale what i need now is i need to take this ring and i need to lie it on its side to allow me for real measurements that will that i can transfer across to create my template so i need to construct this ring lying down on the side the way to do that is is that point up there. So that point up there, if I bring that down to the middle, that is going to give me the middle point of the circle. And then that unfortunately lies just there. Just here. And that will intersect with the side of the ring where here, basically, there. Because that's, you know, that's the same as the other one. Like that. And once you have drawn these two in, That will then give you that line. I mean, oh, we need a center line as well. Hang on a second. We need a center line as well. Then we can start constructing the ring as we have above. So we're going from the middle. Now I only need the 